Hello, I am Reveli Isgrig. I am the Museum Program Coordinator for the MacArthur Museum of Arkansas Military History. And today I'm here to talk to you about uh, Nina Allender, the subject of one of our current exhibits, Imagery and Irony, the Battle for Women's Suffrage through the political cartoons of Nina Allender. Nina Allender was born Nina Evans in 1872 in Kansas. Her parents were both involved in education. Her father was a school superintendent and her mother was a teacher. Her parents took government jobs and moved to Washington, D.C., where Nina lived most of her life. She married Charles Allender in 1893. But Charles fled to England to avoid prison for embezzlement and forgery, and they later divorced. Nina attended the Corcoran School of Art and later the Pennsylvania Academy of Art. She also studied in Italy in 1905 under the tutelage of Robert Henri, as well as in England under Frank Brangwen. Her artistic mentors were Henri and William Merritt Chase. Her artistic career truly took off after meeting suffragist Alice Paul. Allender met Paul in 1912. Alice Paul came to visit Nina and her mother when the two were working for the U.S. government. Alice was calling on them to donate time and money to the suffrage movement. Alice Paul was not an easy woman to turn down, so Nina began a long association both with Paul and the women's suffrage movement. It was Alice Paul who convinced Nina to submit her political cartoons to the National Woman's Party magazine, The Suffragist. Although Allender saw herself more as a painter than a cartoonist, she became the main cartoonist for The Suffragist, the National Woman's Party's sole periodical. Later, the periodical became the Equal Rights Magazine, for which Allender also produced cartoons. As the push for women's suffrage continued, America was pushed into the Great War. World War I began for Europeans in 1914, but the U.S. remained neutral until 1917. Once President Wilson declared war, the very first governmental propaganda department in the U.S. was created. It was called the Committee on Public Information. George Creel was at the helm of this committee, and he enlisted artist Charles Gibson to form a group of artists to become the Department of Pictorial Publicity. It is through this department that the U.S.'s first true propaganda posters are produced. The DPP is also from where Nina Allender draws inspiration to turn around the fight for democracy abroad and bring it home. The image of Uncle Sam is now so ubiquitous to American patriotic imagery that it is used in commercials, business logos, and humorous parodies. Because of how prolific this image is in our society, it has lost a bit of its power in persuasion. The stern face and pointing finger had a strong influential effect during World War I. It placed its message directly in the viewers' faces, so that there could be no mistaking who the army was after. You. Allender was no doubt aware of the efficacy of this image, and used it to her advantage. Sure, the army, Uncle Sam, the U.S. government wanted you for the cause of democracy around the world, but what about at home? Allender's caption pokes fun at Flagg's use of the strident, pointed finger. One hand may be calling for democracy, but the other is pushing it back. These two images play with another prolific patriotic image, the Statue of Liberty. Again, we have the pointed finger and stern expression in the Macaulay poster. The war poster threatens the end of liberty, the end of freedom if the war effort is not supported. Allender's cartoon takes the same symbol and lightly, rationally, 
points out the hypocrisy in its use. The enemy may be fighting against freedom abroad, but the U.S. government is not understanding that liberty and freedom are not available to all Americans. There is a lot to unpack in this cartoon. At first glance, it appears that Allender has moved away from parodying war support posters, but that's not the case. This cartoon proves that Allender, although witty and rational in her political criticisms, does not shy away from calling out injustice with a sharp tongue. First, notice the caption next to the police officer, the good-natured police. He's drawn in a jovial way, plump cheeks, easy posture, and a slight grin. But what is he grinning about? That easy posture is in stark contrast to the action taking place in the forefront of the cartoon. So let's look at that action. The, the diagonal body language indicates motion and struggle. The suffragist is being attacked by the sailor who brandishes some sort of stick at the woman. She has been thrown to the ground. Her sign reads, Make the world safe for democracy. This sentiment was used on war support efforts and here is being used in an ironic way to support women's suffrage. It's important to note that suffragists were attacked by sailors while demonstrating and the police did nothing to stop it. Finally, the clincher. Allender titled this drawing, First to Fight. As seen here, First to Fight was a frequently used slogan for the U.S. Marine Corps. By titling her work with the same slogan, Allender brings to light a discrepancy in values. While war support posters such as this one glorify the fight, Allender's work uses the slogan to show their hypocrisy when it comes to allowing the vote for women, to the point of beating them in the streets. What's more, suffragists were jailed for their actions. Many endured physical abuse while incarcerated, and some were force-fed when they attempted a hunger strike. Which makes the good-natured police comment even more tongue-in-cheek. Allender also drew inspiration from past artists. Here we can see clear parallels to Delacroix's Liberty Leading the People in both subject and composition. Each work at first appears to be slightly chaotic, but on closer inspection there is an orderly wall of figures pressing forward. The woman at the forefront, leading the masses, past whirling clouds, is present in both with right hand held high. Delacroix's lady is liberty incarnate, while Allender's is a modern woman fighting for the principle. Thematically, they both represent citizen uprisings to ensure their freedom and rights against an unjust government. Delacroix being the July Revolution of 1830 in France, and Allender's The Fight for Suffrage. Allender draws parallels to revolution again in this drawing from 1915. Here she has done so quite deliberately and heavy-handedly so as not to be misunderstood. Here she replaces the original three musicians from Yankee Doodle with modern-day suffragists. Drawing a parallel to the U.S.'s revolutionary war against Great Britain, thus breaking away from the monarchy to form a democratic society in which the people rule, Allender shows that the suffragists are also revolutionaries, breaking from the rule of men only, and illustrates how their movement is in line with the founding American beliefs and values. Lastly, it is important to note that through her political cartoons, she created the Allender Girl, a transition from the frumpy and angry-looking depictions of suffragists at the time. She instead depicted suffragists as young, attractive, slender, serious, and determined. Also a deviation from the very popular Gibson Girl, 
Christie Girl and Brinkley Girl. The Christie Girl especially became synonymous with patriotic women. Prior to the Allender Girl, these male artists controlled the popular image of women, whether a suffragist or not. The Gibson Girl is demure, but also lacks much personality. The Brinkley Girl is simply cartoonishly over the top, and the Christie Girl seems to be some sort of overly attractive tomboy, similar to women seen in football or truck commercials today. Do these remind you of anything? In contrast, the Allender Girl is represented in a much more realistic manner. She is not overly done up like the Christie or Brinkley Girl, nor is she stuffy and mute like the Gibson Girl. The Allender Girl reflects the modern woman, educated, intellectual, driven, and most importantly, civically involved. Nina Allender used the symbolism, words, and drew inspiration from the same sources as those men who created support posters for World War I. The mission of the Department of Pictorial Publicity was overwhelmingly successful. And so was Nina Allender's.